Hey guys, and welcome back to Psychic Celluloid Signals. Today I'm doing a review on a Canadian horror film called Cube. This was recommended to us a couple months ago, and I wanted to find a good copy of the film on a college budget, and I finally did, so here we go. Thank you so much, Rachel KDS, for the recommendation. I actually have never heard of this film before, and I'm not sure if you can read the quote on the top here, but it says, ruthlessly beautiful and compelling. This quote is from my favorite director, David Cronenberg, so I was already excited before I even started the film. This movie starts out with a short sequence featuring Julian Richings, who, for those of you who remember, is the actor I praised in my ejector review, and honestly, his acting was one of the highlights of that film. Sadly, he doesn't make it far in this film, and don't worry, that's not a spoiler. It's in the trailer, I believe, and anyways, he meets his end within the first five minutes of the film. Essentially, he serves as a grisly demonstration of what happens if the characters don't manage to navigate the cube correctly, which brings us to the rest of the characters. We begin the film with a doctor, a cop, a prison escapee, a brilliant math student, an architect, and an autistic savant. They all wake up in a cube-shaped room, with doors leading to other cube-shaped rooms, some of them booby-trapped. The main objective of the group throughout the film is, of course, to escape the bizarre prison they found themselves in. Of course, this would be a rather dull film if it amounted to nothing more than people navigating the cube, much like mice in a maze. The movie as a whole does little explaining, which I think is one of its biggest strengths. For instance, why are they in the maze? Is it some sort of extraterrestrial experiment? Some sadistic billionaire? Did Donald Trump decide a three-dimensional cube would be a better use of resources than a simple wall? <laughs> Who knows? The further you get into the film, the more hints there are as to how the cube may have come to be, but you can never be sure, and I've even seen some people online suggesting that the cube could even be purgatory or hell. There are other enigmatic elements to the plot as well. For instance, all of the characters have special talents to help them navigate the cube and survive, despite the clear lack of an instruction manual for the cube. And this is also really the only thing we know for sure about the characters. We do learn a little bit about everyone as the film progresses, but are they always telling the truth, or are they just as mysterious as the cube itself? The background of the cube is perhaps as interesting as the plot itself. Shot on a budget of $350,000, the set of the film essentially consisted of one 14 by 14 foot cube, which had several colored panels to make the rooms appear different as in the film. The name of the characters are interesting as well, as they're all der derivative of prison names. And for those of you who haven't seen the film, or who have seen the film, rather, you might find it interesting to know that the mathematician Levin and architect Worth are both named after the same prison, Leavenworth. In addition, for my fellow Twilight Zone fans, this movie is inspired by the Twilight Zone episode, Five Characters in Search of an Exit. So who knows? Maybe the characters aren't even really human beings like we think they are. <laughs> you can really read too much into this film. As far as criticisms, I don't have too many. Maybe the least personal preference related criticism I have is the acting isn't always brilliant. That isn't to say it's not good, and there are certainly plenty of brilliant moments. I just think there were scenes where a character would deliver a line and it would either not convey the emotion it was supposed to, or it would be over the top. I think this is mostly a nitpick though, and I would by no means want anyone to go into this film thinking it's full of bad acting. My other nitpick would be the CGI type effects were not the greatest. But since this film was shot in the 90s, and certainly not on a Hollywood budget, I'm more than willing to overlook this, especially seeing as the bulk of the film centers around interactions between the characters and not the effects. Ultimately, to quote Cronenberg again, this film truly is ruthlessly beautiful and compelling. I recommend this film to anyone who is into horror films that keep you guessing and leave you wondering what the hell actually happened. 
This film is also great for people into conspiracy theories or really anyone interested in seeing a 90s Canadian cult classic. Thanks once again for the recommendation. Leave your thoughts, suggestions, and anything else in the comments below. Take care.